Welcome and thank you for joining in another episode of Scotia Live webinar series. We're at episode two in season four. If you've missed the other episodes, don't worry. You can find them on our YouTube page. And if you tune in, you're going to get more details on where you can find the episodes. My name is Kingsley Morgan. I'm your host for this evening. I'm your typical millennial investor and an entrepreneur. So I have some stuff to say to you as well but I have some people who want to talk to you some more. Now, we are at the middle of the year, right? We're at June. And I know that we made some resolutions early in the year. You know that June one thing, the idea of vision board and thing. And I'm pretty sure you had invested as one of those vision board indicators and achievements that you want to tick off by December um, at the end of 2022. If you've fallen off, that's okay, because we have people here to help you get back on track. Today we're going to be talking about investing and I know you're excited, I'm excited because we always want to know how we can level up the money, how we can get that 480k per month, <laughs> right? And I say that because one of the experts here is Anna Falamino. She is a finance, uh, she's a personal finance coach and she definitely know how to get your money up to that level, you know, so you can satisfy and meet that mark of 480k. And we have Dervin um, Polar here. He is a investment advisor at Scotia Investments. So if you want an investment advisor, Dervin is here. He's going to give you all the details later. So just stay tuned. Guys, I want to engage you and I want you to engage us. So leave your comments on Instagram. Leave your comments in the chat on Zoom. And we are going to answer your questions. All of us, the two experts and myself, right? So we're going to jump right into it, right? So... Investing, right? Let's start with Dervin. What is investing? All right. You want a formal definition of investing. <laughs> and, you know, from my perspective, investing is the dedication of an asset to get some kind of increase in its financial value over time. Now, it is going to require some kind of sacrifice on your part, the investor, whether you sacrifice your time, you could sacrifice your money or even your effort in order to get that growth that you're looking for. But it's an asset, and there are so many assets out there. So the asset you choose and the length of time that you invest is going to be unique to you, the investor. Great, great. Thank you, Dervin. So, so pretty much, um, it's, 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 it's like a... You know, I always define investment as like a one-one cocoa full basket. Mm -hmm. But I think of the, of the products that, that fall under investment as different kind of baskets. So you can put cocoa in one, yam in one, planting in one, cherry in one. Do, does that make sense? Different kind of products, different kind of food items in your basket, mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> okay. <Yeah man. laughs> okay, great. So, so um, I, I, I am happy you, you, you kind of set the groundwork there about um, what is investing. And I want to shift the conversation to why do you think we need to invest? Why is that, why is that important? All right. There are many reasons that people invest. Um, and it's always going to be personal. So, you know, whether you want to get to the next level in your career, um, get some more education, maybe you want to save towards purchasing a property, anything like that. You know, some people even invest for retirement. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many reasons to invest. Yeah, I can, I can relate to that, um, um, Dervin, because I, I, as I said earlier, I'm an entrepreneur. And to start that business, I had to rely on my investment portfolio. You know, started it a few years before it mm -hmm. matured in some kind of way, got some, you know, some dividends and got, got some, some returns. Some, some returns. <laughs> yes, well. And because of that, um, that patience that I had a few years before, mm -hmm. and because of that commitment that I made in some of these products, I was able to tap into that to kind of find the capital for, for my business. Um, so, so Anna, and I want to bring it in here. What are some other reasons 
uh, you have many clients. <laughs> like, guys, Anna is a superstar, okay? <laughs> you have many clients. What are some of the reasons um, they've come to you and said that, you know, this is why I want to get into investments or investing? And what have you suggested to them? Well, the, primary, the thing about it is that how I like to think of it is the clients that I have came to me because of my primary the thing that I'm primarily known for, and it's early retirement or becoming work optional as soon as possible. So the, the primary reason I'm there with them is to build on their, their, their investment account, whether it is a, 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 an equity product or it is a unit trust product, is to build on that to get them to that point where they can say, I'm not work optional, or hey, I can retire completely at you know, maybe 35, 40, whatever age it may be. It's completely personal. As, as Dervin said earlier, it depends on your reason for investing. Um, but primarily for me, it's early retirement or becoming, as <laughs> becoming uh, work optional as quickly as possible. And you know, as you, as you mentioned retirement, it is going to be very important during this discussion. Um, and the beauty about retirement is, as you said, you, if you do it well, you can choose when exactly you want to retire. So exactly. But the, the key here is that you have to start and you have to start early. You have to start early. Have, all right. So, you know what? Let's dial it back a little. Um, using that same one one cocoa full basket example, um, can't I. Some of the things that you mentioned, Anna, they sound very expensive. <laughs> right and you know you put away they say you put away 20 percent 30 percent of your of your income you know for savings can't i achieve some of these goals by saving and and when you answer that i want you to help me to distinguish the the, the, the difference between saving and investing yeah let All me right. throw that to dervin so i i would have defined investing already you know one one coca fill basket you have a longer term time horizon, you're trying to get some growth in your portfolio or in your assets, whatever they may be. Savings though is a different kettle of fish. It's more like a, that, that first kind of account that you start. It is a gateway product, helps you to build up that, that muscle of putting aside something every month or whenever you can. Mm -hmm. And it's from your savings that you'll be able to invest, as, as you, of course, would know, Anna. Um, but the idea here is that you need to start somewhere. You need to be able to build up that savings. Because no matter how you cut it, your savings are not going to be enough, first of all. Um, yes, it's going to be less risky and usually the easy way, but with inflation doing what it's doing right now. That's the thing. You yes. cannot Savings. afford to not invest. Exactly. You can't just save. Inflation right now is one of the primary <laughs> factors that I bear in mind when I'm with my clients. But how does that, how does that affect me, Anna? How does inflation affect me? So here's the thing. People tend to not think inflation is a real thing because you're not seeing it actively. You leave $100,000 in your savings account, you log in a year, two years from now, you're going to see 100000 But you know, when people start realizing the impact of inflation, when they withdraw the 100000 they go into the supermarket and they realize, I wow, I can only get two loaves of bread. Last year, I could have gotten 500 loaves of bread. That is inflation at work. And I always tell my clients that inflation is the, the baddest thief in our life. <laughs> Nobody never yet sees it. And it affects everybody it, in, in a partial t to just this person, that person, it affects everybody. So you can't keep all of your portfolio in just your savings account. You have to combat inflation. Okay, combat inflation. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to ask some more questions about that <laughs> later on. But back to, just go, going back to uh, the difference between saving and investing. Uh, Anna, do I need a lot of money to start investing? Absolutely not. That is one of the biggest myths I come across in my job. You do not need a lot of money. In fact, let me tell you something. Once you get your brokerage account open, or whatever product you're going to open, whether it's a unit trust product or you can just visit Dervin. Dervin has a whole, whole slew of, of products. Right. So once you get the account open, 
you have to remember that one stock, for example, you can find one stock on the market for like a dollar Jamaican. You can find a stock on the market, $10 Jamaican, $20 Jamaican. So if you do the math, if you have $2,000, how many stocks do you think you can purchase with that? If you find a stock that's $10 each or a dollar each, mm -hmm. you can get started with that. That's the biggest myth ever. Just get started, get started, get in the habit. As Dervin said, you are basically uh, flexing a muscle. You're, you're, you're working a particular muscle. You have to develop a habit. Just get started. So essentially, saving is important. Investing is important. One is a gateway to the other. Mm -hmm. One is a little bit more sophisticated, that is investing. Um, but the savings account really funnels into the investing account. So you, you know, you're putting away some of the savings into the investing account so that it can do a lot more work for you. Precisely. Got it. <laughs> Got it. I feel like a scholar. I feel like I should be on that side of, of hey. the chair. No. <laughs> right? So, so now that we've set the premise for that, right, I, 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 I want to ask you guys about the process to get, you know, get started with, with investing. Uh, you know, what, what, what do I need? How do you do that? You know, step by step. Can you break that down for me, Dervin? All right. You mentioned something a while ago, process. Mm -hmm. You have to trust the process. And investing is not going to be an overnight success. So you have to take that into consideration. But you ask for the steps. Here they are. You have to identify your goal or goals, whatever they may be. And once you have identified that goal or goals, you now need to speak with someone who is reliable, professional, and trustworthy. Sounds like Dervin. You want to say that louder? <laughs> <laughs> yes, someone Sounds like, like a Scotia Investments said. Advisor. Yes. Um, and once you speak with them, you know, they will get a better understanding of what your needs are. Because here's the thing with investing. You cannot... Do, do investing by listening to your friends. You can't do it by listening to your family or your co-workers. It's like a fin financial prescription just for you. I like that. I like that. I love that too. I'm going to use that as a, as a caption um, <laughs> on Instagram later on. <laughs> it's a prescription um, for, for... What am I saying? It's just for you. Just for you. Uh, I lost, <laughs> it, I lost it already. You. It's a, it's a prescription right. just for you. And, and, and are you side? Because he said that, you know, you can't listen to your friends, your family, because it's, it's, it's personal, it's individualistic. Can you, can you chime in on that based on your experience? Sure. I'm going to go one step further. In addition to visiting a Scotia investment advisor and having a meeting with Dervin here, for example, <laughs> I think you need to make sure you understand as much as you possibly. You need to start understanding how to invest. You need to start. You need to understand what the terms are. And I'm not telling you to go enroll in no, dig in no university, go get no degree in finance or whatever. Just understand the terms. At least start there. Mm -hmm. And then you slowly build your knowledge base. Because here's the thing. When you just you buy a particular stock just because your friends say, this, this stock is going to shoot off, it's going to be amazing. There's actually a meme on TikTok where they said, this stock is going to be amazing. <laughs> and this is the stock. <laughs> Boom, <laughs> right? And then you sit down there wondering, you, you, you start cussing your friend because how dare you? You told me to buy this stock and it's going horribly. But the thing about it is that you have to, you have to take some of that blame because you need to understand for yourself. In addition to seeking a professional assistance, you need to also understand for yourself. So Agreed. it's not a general thing. Everybody go buy this. Everybody go buy that. It's not that at all. I like that because what I've been seeing is that there's almost like a pop culture feel and, and following around um, investing. So there is an IPO and, you know, there's this, there's this mob approach. Mm. So a lot of people are, are getting units of this stock that is available. Mm -hmm. So me want to me wa get some stocks as well, you know, without even reading the prospectus, mm -hmm. without even consulting your advisor, because not, not every stock is for you. Right? And I know, I know we're talking about stock as, as one of the products on the investing, 
but it's like one of the, the popular ones that I think a lot of persons have caught on to from a knowledge standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, there are other products that Dervin can tell us about that a lot of people have not explored. Mm -hmm. But just looking back at stocks, um, the knowledge around that, it's, it's almost as if, if the crowd would buy the stock here, then I need to buy the stock as well. Do you know how many times I get new clients and they tell me, I have, a, I have stocks in this company, that company, this company. I say to them, what does this company do? Mm. They can't tell they me. They don't know. Do you know how many times? <laughs> they, don't even re they, they don't even know what the prospectus looks like. Mm -hmm. And what I want to say really quickly is that, guys, just open the document. I know it's like a 100-page document, but just open it, scroll through. You're going to realize it's, it's actually not as difficult to read as you think it would be. Mm -hmm. They use very simple terms, very simple language for you to be able to understand. And here's the thing, it's not everything in there. That you, you, you don't need to understand the whole 100 page document, but at least open it, yeah. get an idea of what's being said before you purchase the stock, yeah. right? Or you can reach Talk out to, to Dervin. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> or you can reach out to Dervin. <laughs> we keep referencing Dervin because he's a, a, a Scotia Investments advisor and um, probably one of the better ones, um, one of the best um, around. So if you really want to get started, you can start, talk to Dervin. But Dervin, I'm going to go back a little and, I, and I'm going to be painstaking because I want to just like use a scalpel and just pull away at this investing. So you, you mentioned that we need to identify our goals. What are some of the goals that, that we could, we could uh, highlight um, when we think about investing? Once again, personal. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a key word here. But, you know, as a general uh, goal, we could say we want to beat inflation. You want a portfolio that is going to outpace inflation so that you can generate real wealth. Ah, oh, I like that. Right? You could want to buy a property. You could want to go back to school. Any number of reasons. That is why it is so important that you have a relationship with your advisor or get an advisor. Mm -hmm. Many goals there. Okay, so I'm an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Right, and I'm sure there are some entrepreneurs on, on, the, on the live as well. What is your recommendation for, for investing for people like us? That's a good question. Um, you know, the strategy is going to be very similar. Identify your goals, find an advisor. But for entrepreneurs, there are some things that I would definitely recommend you look into. So, for example, you may want to look into having separate strategies, separate portfolios for you, the individual, versus you, the company, or you, the brand. Uh -huh. Because where your brand may want to go in a couple of years might differ from where you might see yourself in a couple of years. Right? Uh, as an entrepreneur as well, you know, sometimes your income may not be stable from yeah. month to month. I mean, you can coach me here. Mm -hmm. But if it isn't a stable income from month to month, you definitely need to have a strategy in place. So, for example, you may want to employ the 50-30-20 rule, whereas whenever you get some income, however frequent or infrequent it may be, you put your 50% towards your needs, you put 30% towards your wants, and 20% you can put towards the investing and saving. I like that. 50, and 30, 20. 50, 30, Another 20. Another IG rule. caption. It's up. Um, <laughs> so, so 50% towards the needs, 30% towards the wants, and 20% towards investing. Towards investing. I think this is, an imp this is, this is a nice um, um, juncture in the conversation to, 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 to talk about the risk appetite. And, and I want Anna to chime in as well. But from a, from a, from a corporate standpoint, um, in assessing risk appetite, how would you advise um, your clients on that? All of this, once again, that keyword? Personal. 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 All right. <laughs> now, your risk appetite or your risk tolerance is really just a measure of how much risk you're willing to take. We don't want to suggest an option, uh, an asset, an investment that will have your heart palpitating mm -hmm. when you're trying to go to bed at night because it is so risky. We also don't want it to be a case where you're wondering if this makes sense because you're not really earning much on your investment. So we're trying to find that nice compromise for you, a suitable option. 
fund as an investment for you. Mm -hmm. So that takes into consideration your risk tolerance. And you, know, you mentioned risk tolerance, but another important aspect is your time frame, your time horizon. You know, how long is it that you're looking to invest? Yeah. You're trying to do something short term, maybe within a year. Are you looking for a medium term, a three to five year timeline? Or are you looking for something way out in the future? All of that is going to be important when you sit down with your advisor. I love that. I love that. Personal, personal. That's, that's <laughs> the, I'm never going to forget that word now. Um, so Anna, for you now, uh, the, the, the risk assessment, uh, how do you advise your clients? For me, well, first of all, I don't advise my clients. I send them to somebody like Dervin. <laughs> <laughs> but the fundamental principle here for me is that I don't think any one person can just say, my risk appetite, I, I like conservative, full stop. I like aggressive, full stop. I think it's very important that you have diversification in your portfolio. I think what it comes down to is that you may, be, you may say, you know what? I like, I, I'm leaning more towards conservative. So what would happen is that probably 30%, 40, 50, 60% of your portfolio is conservative, whereas you know, maybe 30, whatever math that was mm -hmm. that I just said, <laughs> is more aggressive, and then you have the balance being moderate. Mm -hmm. Or if I can stomach more risk, it would be, okay, I'm gonna make my portfolio 40% aggressive, 30% um, conservative, and so on and so forth. But I don't think anybody should be able to, should say, I'm just, I'm conservative, full stop. So all of my portfolio is gonna be conservative, or I'm aggressive, full stop. So everything is gonna be aggressive. Diversification is the key here. What are some ways uh, I could determine the kind of investor I am, whether I am risky or conservative or a little bit of both? How, how, how could I determine that? Well, the thing is, the, fir the first thing is, the most obvious one is speak to somebody <laughs> like Derby. <Derby's. laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, if, you, if you're not ready to take that step yet, I think it's, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just think about who you are as a person. When you encounter a risky situation, let's not talk about investment, just a risky situation. You have a choice in front of you. One option is more risky, the other option is less risky. What are you more inclined to do? Are you more inclined? Does this thing over here excite you? The risky part excite you? Are you shying away from it? You're like, no, you know what? I'm going to just go over here where it's safer. Just, it doesn't have to be anything fancy and elaborate. Just start with who you are as a person, your personality. Once you think you have an, a handle on it, speak to somebody like Dervin, and you'll get an official answer. <laughs> Dervin, the same question for you. Um, in, terms of, in terms of determining my risk appetite, what, mm -hmm. what are some of the uh, technical steps that you take? You know, so I come into you, what are some of those, those, those methods that you use to determine the type of investor I am? No, it is really a conversation that is, that is the most. Um, Yes, as, as a trained advisor, I, I know certain questions to ask to get a response out of you. Um, I may ask you, for example, are you looking to invest um, for the long term? You know? Are you, or what is your goal? And from your goal, I can probably identify what timeline you might be working with there. I may ask you, how are your savings looking? because from your savings is where you're going to invest, most likely. And we would never want it to be a case where we take out most of your savings towards an investment, because your savings is going to be an important aspect of your financial plan, all right? So, you know, many, many ways that conversation can go. The important part is that we need to sit down and talk about it. And I, think, I mm -hmm. think this is why, I'm gonna just add to this, I think that's, this is why it's so important for you to have uh, somewhat of a knowledge base as relates to personal finance because you see the thing is Darwin people can sit down in front of you and say um, my timeline is two years I'm trying to get rich in two years um, I have this amount of money what can you do for me but they still can't stomach the, ri stomach the risk right. so when it comes to the education aspect you know that you know what if I'm gonna be investing for two years and I want to uh, amass all of this wealth it's, it's going to be so I'm going to have to do some aggressive, some aggressive things in my portfolio, mm -hmm. right? You'd know that, listen, you can't come talk about how I want to amass all of this and you're afraid of risk completely. You have to 
it comes down to, to personal finance and education, really. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about setting, your, setting up yourself for success, a millennial's guide to growing and protecting wealth. If you're just joining us, I have Anna Palomino here, and I have Dervin Polar here. Dervin is a advisor, investment advisor at Scotiabank, and Anna is a personal finance coach. We are having a very, very engaging, very fruitful conversation. If you missed the first segment, that's okay. Stick around. They have a lot more to offer. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys have been sending questions, so I want to take some questions now. What do you got to say? What do you got to say? So Marvin Fletcher from Zoom, he said, everyone always says start early, but what about those who did not? What about that person? So I'm going to start with Dervin and then I'm going to come over to Anna. All right. So start early. Definitely um, the recommendation. It's either the, they said the best time to invest would have been 10 years ago. If you can't start early, the second best time is to start now. That is it. That's the best answer there is. If you are not invested at this moment, come talk to me tomorrow. <laughs> right. Because you need to get invested. Guys, Dervin is at the Ligani branch, mm -hmm. the Scotia, the Scotia <laughs> Ligani branch. He will take your calls, he will take your emails, he will make time for you. Link him tomorrow. Anna, same question. Well, I'm just going to recapitulate a lot of what Dervin said. For me, and this is a thing about me, my pet peeve, I do not like when people reference age. So don't tell me, oh, I'm in my 40s, I'm in my 50s, it's too late. I don't really care about your age. It's about you starting now. Start now. You didn't know yesterday? Start now. That is it. Yeah. Don't waste any more time. Go start now. In fact, don't even wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Jump on YouTube, um, re Google some things just to see what the topics are, what the, the concepts are, and then you can talk to Dervin tomorrow. Love that. Love that. It's like, it's like, I guess it's like going in the gym. You know, you complain about, you know, your weight or you want to gain some muscles. Um, you never started 10 years ago, five years ago, or last year. If you start now, you're going to see results over time. You know, but like you said, patience. You know, start. patience and, and sticking with it and being consistent. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take another question from one of our viewers, Yannick Penat, Penedo. Yannick Penedo, I'm sorry, Yannick. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't hurt me. Um, Yannick said that I want to retire in three years. I'm currently 45. What options are available for me? I think um, both of you guys can take this. So give me the, the corporate, give me the <laughs> lifestyle. Go ahead, Dervin. Now, you're, you mentioned that you're 45, want to retire in three years. Really and truly, three years is a short-term time horizon. So you definitely need to start er as soon as possible. It might be a case where you'll need to, if you can, seed some money into a retirement fund and then start to do monthly contributions into that fund from here on out. Granted, you will need to set yourself a goal as to what you want to earn in retirement and possibly work backwards from there. So if it is that you need to, ach you need to have for example, two million in a retirement fund. I'm using, <laughs> you know, low figures, but still. <laughs> if you want to have two million in a retirement fund, you know you have three years to go. How can you start today and invest regularly on a monthly basis and have that accumulate to that two million dollars in the three years? You're going to have to sit down with an advisor to have those calculations done, but it is, it is not impossible. It's not impossible, Yannick. Uh, Anna, your thoughts? Well, you see, the thing is, I wish I were able to ask some questions because it depends on what your portfolio looks like right now. What does it look like now? Do you have fully stocked emergency funds? Are you already investing? Where are you right now? That's the first thing. The second thing is, Miss Pinedo, I, I wish I could talk to you, but Miss <laughs> Pinedo, listen, you need to have, I don't know what your mindset is like now, but there's a good chance you're going to have to have a mindset change, which is going to have to be, you need to go in next gear, next gear. You need more money. So you need to start earning more money, start working on increasing your income. 
And yes, I, not, I mean the 480 thing, yes, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you need to increase your income. I, yes. I wish I had time to go into it. But once you increase your income, and you increase your income, and increase your income, you funnel it into your investments, then you um, take into consideration the time frame, take into consideration your lifestyle, what your portfolio currently looks like, and we can basically work out something for you to hit your target in that timeline. I love that. Experts, guys. Experts. <laughs> uh, Yannick, I, I, I hope you are happy with that response. And if you want to talk to Anna some more, her details will be shared at the end. And if you want to talk to Dervin, you can also um, reach out to him when the details are shared. I have one more question because I love these questions. Uh, Margaret Sutherland said on Zoom, why is it when I invest it takes years before you see the dividends? All right, now for that question, I know you're looking at me. <laughs> I need more information. Mm. What is it that uh, you're invested in? Because not all investments take years to see dividends. Right? You could look at a, a low-risk fund that could provide you with quarterly dividends. Um, you know, if you are invested in stocks, you may be getting dividends during the year if the company decides to pay. So it is going to be dependent on what you're invested in for me to fully answer that question. What options exist for you? Okay. Anna, you want to? Yeah, for sure. For me, it's completely dependent on your investment strategy. Uh, Margaret, if you were investing in strong dividend paying stocks, then there's a good chance that it wouldn't take years for you to see dividends. But if you're just buying stock, it depends on your strategy and what you're doing and how you even got these stocks in the first place. But not every stock takes years. Not every product takes years for you to see it at all. It, comes, it depends on what you're invested in. But there's a, let me just say, if you invest in strong dividend paying stocks, which join my program, The Money Society, I'll teach you how to do it. <laughs> if you want to do that, then it's not going to take years for you to see dividends. Margaret? There you go. Uh, I, I really love these questions. I want to encourage you guys to ask some more questions. Throw them at me. Uh, I won't be answering them. The experts are here to answer them. And um, they really want to talk to you guys some more. So keep asking those questions. You can send a follow-up question and we can throw it back to the same person who answered. And we can get more perspectives. So please keep talking to us. So jumping back in. Entrepreneurs who are on the live. Uh, they may believe that owning their business is enough of an investment. You know, so you can put on your pot with the business, you can set <laughs> up your life with the business, you can get kids off of the business, your retirement is in the business, everything is in that basket. Is that a good way to be um, setting up your, your finances and setting up your investing and investment portfolio? Just thinking of your business as your sole investment that is going to save you through and through? Go ahead, Anna. Absolutely not. <laughs> that is the answer, the short answer. Here's the thing about it. It's a start. Having a business and having a, su a successful business, it's a start. But listen, businesses are too, they're, they're too fickle. Something can happen in the economy. There can be an economic downturn. And literally, just like that, your sales dip dramatically. I always tell my clients, my clients who are entrepreneurs, I don't care how much your business is doing. I don't care if it's doing $50,000 per month. I don't care if it's doing $20 million per month. If it's your only source of income, we need to start working on a second source, a third source, a fourth source immediately. Immediately. Anything can happen. You can't put on your pot as you said, <laughs> with just the fact that you have a business. You need to have multiple sources going on. And when I say multiple, let me just put this out there. When I say multiple, I don't mean 50 million, 1,000 million. <laughs> multiple can mean two, three, OK? Mm -hmm. All right, but we need, to, we need to get started. Even if it is that you are going to, because I get this question a lot too, sorry. Even if, if it is that you're going to have your business as your primary source, did you know that a secondary source could be your investments? Of course. Mm. So I'm not telling you to go start. You don't have to go start a whole other enterprise, a whole other empire. No, you just need to put a lot of that money to work so that it can become another source of income for you. Yeah, I like that. Dervin? Uh, so, no. <laughs> to add on to what Anna said, it is not going to be enough. What you're mentioning in, in, in this case, we'd call it, you're concentrating putting everything into this 
one business. That is a strategy that can go down so quickly, it's not even funny. You definitely want to diversify. Yes, as Anna said, you can diversify through investing. You can diversify through uh, real estate, rental income. Anything that can get you additional income as an entrepreneur is going to be extremely important. And your strategy has to be long term. You have to look at yourself now, look at yourself where you want to be in 20, 30, 40 years, and make that plan from now. Brilliant, brilliant. Starting now. No. Uh, I want to I wanna play a little, let's call it a game or a challenge. A right? game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Scotia has a, like a host of products that he have available when it comes on to investing. Um, Scotia Investments, very diverse, and, and Dervin can tell you all about it. And that's exactly what we're going to ask him to do. So Anna, I want you to present some real life um, cases, like call it case study. Okay. You know, so if I, if I want to save or uh, if I want to invest, or I want you to present some lifestyle choices and then Dervin, I'm going to want you to match it with a Scotia product that Not could problem. benefit that lifestyle. Okay, I like this game. All right, <laughs> All right so let's say I want to get, con I want to earn consistent income. Which product do you think that would suit, that would be good for you? Consistent income, an income fund like uh, uh, our US dollar indexed fund, something that provides consistent income every quarter. Okay, let's say you wanna build an emergency fund. Which product do you think that would be? No, your emergency fund needs to be safe and liquid. So you could use a savings account or you could use a money market fund ah, on the investment that's my side. Thing. Ah. That's my thing, money market that's fund, okay. <laughs> uh, let's say you want to build an opportunity, I call it a business opportunity account a business opportunity fund, which product do you think? No, for opportunity funds, you know, you are going to need access to those. You're mm -hmm. going to need to be able to move quickly should an opportunity come up. Right. I would definitely recommend once again, that money market fund. Money market fund again, okay. Uh, liquidity. Liquidity. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say I want to earn, uh, uh, I just want long-term growth. I want long-term income. What do you think? Long term, we could look at stocks and equity fund um, and any of the other funds over the long term would provide you some income. But for that long term capital growth, you're going to want to look at the equities yourself. Equity, that's my thing again. <laughs> equity. He's so excited. <laughs> Can you go? I love it. Yeah, I mean, I love it's that. your game. <laughs> no, 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 I love that. So, so when I say that Scotia has everything that you need scotia has everything that you need um so from from savings to your money market to your equity to your stocks to anything where you want to do scotia has um, a product that can match that for you and dervin at the ligony branch at scotia i'm, I'm going to keep plugging there <laughs> can help you to decide um for where sure. to start so it's it's not about uh following the crowd it's not about seeing a tweet or seeing an IG post or hearing something on the radio and deciding that this is the route I want to go. Um, it's about having a conversation because it is personal. It is individualistic. You have to decide what route you want to take. It's right? also about having a strategy. Having a strategy. Yep, having a strategy. So uh, just, just as a millennial, right? Uh, and we mentioned it earlier about, you know, just, just going with the vibes, investing with vibes. You know, we love vibes. Right. We're Jamaicans. <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't do nothing without vibes. Um, I find that some of my friends, for example, uh, they, they want to, and they say, flip the money, hmm. right? So they save up uh, half a million dollars, and they believe that if you plug that into investing, they should see a million dollars by next month or they should see $2 million by next year, or they should see $10 million in, in 18 months. What do you have to say to my friends who have that sort of mindset? Go ahead, Personal Anna. finance education. Because once you start understanding how, the, how stocks work, how investments overall work, you would know that, all right, what did you say, 500,000? 500,000. So 10 million in yes. when, yes. next yes. month? Yes. Okay. If, that's not how it works, right? But I feel like once you have invested in education and you know how it works, you're going to not have those expectations. In fact, the opposite is going to happen. If somebody approaches you and tells you that 
give me 500,000, I'm going to give 20 million next month, mm -hmm. alarm bells will go off because mm -hmm. you know that's not how investments work. So I tell your friend, go buy my book, The Big Bad Book of Everything. It has <laughs> everything in there that <laughs> can give you a start, right? Start there. Education. Education. Mm -hmm. All right. Dervin. So for our viewers, I'm going to suggest one thing. Google Rule of 72. Ah. It says, it's a, the it's a theory that says that um, when you take the number 72 and divide it by your um, expected rate of return, that would be the length of time it takes for you to double your money. Google it, learn it, and you just, just know it. <laughs> um, so for that person, for that scenario, yeah, no, it's, it's going to be definitely difficult for you to say you have 500,000, you want to see a million by yeah. next month within this year. You need to start for sure. But temper your expectations. Let us have a discussion. We can show you what is out there, and we can craft a portfolio for you to get as much growth out of the market and in your portfolio as possible. Yeah. You know what I would I say? Mm -hmm. I would say to your friend, I just thought about it. I would say to your friend, if you have $500,000 that you want to flip, you need to invest in yourself. Invest in some skills or your business or something. Because that's one, that's why I love business. Mm -hmm. the, the earning potential, almost limitless. So you could start there. If, I mean, don't start there. Start with Dervin. Step one, Dervin. Step two, invest in yourself. Invest in your business. And that way you can probably see a faster rate of return. I agree. I agree. And I hope my friends are listening. And I hope their friends are also listening. Uh, <laughs> Dervin, categorize for me. Mm -hmm. To the millennial, what are maybe five products that they could uh, start looking into? I mean, Anna mentioned knowledge. Mm -hmm. So they need to start reading about this and they need to probably start flipping their money into these products that, that are offered. I know we played that game in earlier, you mentioned some of them, mm -hmm. but just to get to the, to the granular level, yes, what are some too. categories of, of products that you would, you would recommend? All right. Now, we would have mentioned stocks earlier. And when it comes to investing, stocks is usually what people think. A stock, of course, simply means that you have ownership or a piece of the ownership of a company, a publicly traded company. And the way you earn from holding a stock is that you want that value, the value of your stock to increase. Now, there are other strategies out there, but mostly you want your value, your stock value to increase. However, if and when companies pay dividends, that is another way that you can earn from a stock. All right? mm -hmm. Another product you could look at is a bond. A bond is simply an agreement between you, the investor, and a company or a country wherein the, you lend this company or this country a sum of money, and the agreement is that you should earn some rate of return periodically, and at the end of some predetermined length of time, you should get back the amount you loaned to them. So it's usually stable income to you. Other things we can look at are you know, mutual funds and unit trusts. These are pooled investments. Now, as a pooled investment, you get exposure to a broader category of um, investments on, of companies, instead of you having to pick out one by one which companies you may want to invest in, which bonds you may want to buy. These are professionally managed, so we take all of that off your, off your book, off your table, you know. We will do the heavy lifting for you. So as a professionally managed fund, you could look at something low risk, short term, like our Scotian Premium Money Market Fund, if you wanted something that was more medium term, medium risk, something that could provide you consistent dividend income, we could look at a few of our income funds for that. If you wanted to look at long term capital growth or equity funds, which have been doing exceptionally well, by the way. So mutual funds, unit trusts, look into them. Of course, as in our current environment, we know that real estate is a boom right now. You can 
purchase real estate with the expectation that the value of your real estate will go up. But you can also get rental income from your real estate should you decide to let it out. And a few others, you know, we do have commodities. Those are precious metals, agricultural items, and very timely right now, cryptocurrencies. Now, for cryptocurrencies, they are very volatile in nature, so we have to put that out there. But many investors use this as a way to diversify their portfolio. But I would recommend that you do your research and try to manage expectations. Yeah. There. Mm -hmm. No, very detailed, very detailed, Dervin. Thank you so much. Um, Anna, you, you are always defaulting mm -hmm. to Dervin when we get to the technical um, <laughs> side of investing. Because, you know, Anna, you know, as is, she's not an investment advisor. She's just a personal finance coach. So in your arena, mm -hmm. how do you advise your clients? You know, so your, your typical millen millennial come to you. What are the funds that you recommend? You know, I know you mentioned emergency fund earlier, mm -hmm. but what are the others um, that, that you can expound on so that the millennial that is listening mm -hmm. can also um, tap into these? Well, here's the thing. So I don't look at it as what are the funds. It's more building out your portfolio, mm -hmm. building out your financial portfolio. I tell every client that you need to have two emergency funds. That's a whole lot of discussion, but you need to have two emergency funds. Once you have those stocked, or at least one stocked, then we need to look to uh, building out the investment part of your portfolio, which may include unit trust products, which I like to think of. They're, it's like investments, but with training wheels. We look to um, your brokerage account next, which is you just, you're just buying stocks on an individual basis. Um, next, we have to build out your, in, your insurance portfolio, which a lot of people don't like to talk about, but when I teach it, trust me, you understand that you need it. You need both life and critical, which mm -hmm. uh, Scotia has several products. This one is uh, <laughs> Scotia Criticare? Yep. 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 <laughs> so it's about building out the portfolio. It's not necessarily about the funds. It's about the portfolio. Once you build a foundation, it's like a house. Mm -hmm. You have to build a foundation. You have to build it properly. It has to be sturdy. Once that is done, you can start blocking up, adding on the, 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 the walls, which is, to me is stocking and piling your portfolio at that point. OK, good. Yeah, I just want to just wanna remind you guys, if you missed it just now, Scotia Criticare um, for that. Um, emergency phone and that, you know, critical um, side of mm -hmm. the technicalities that uh, Anna just mentioned. So, Anna, uh, thank you for, for chiming in on that. So, emergency fund, opportunity fund, you know, the consistent income. Anna is very passionate about this, by the way. <laughs> she is an advocate <laughs> for, for income. consistent income mm -hmm. and getting to that. What is that number? Actually... <laughs> If, what, you know what, I'm going to use this platform to say, <laughs> remember 480 is the, is, 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 Baseline. is the base, <laughs> that's how you should think of it, okay? You should be thinking about, you know what, I'm going to do a million dollars this month, I'm going to do two million, that's what I need your mindset to be like, it's mm -hmm. entirely possible, but your mindset has to be fixed first. Mindset. 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 One of the things we didn't, we didn't expound a lot on is insurance. Millennials, you know, we feel invincible. Um, we don't need insurance, nothing's going to happen. So, um, Anna, how do you advise your clients on using insurance as an investing tool? Easy. Let me tell you. This is how I approach millennials or my clients who don't like talking about insurance, period. We're talking about life insurance now. Anna, I'm going to want to no dead left nothing, dead left nothing. <laughs> do you want to get a mortgage? Are you looking to go get a mortgage soon? Because the bank requires that you have life insurance. Are you looking to take out a $20 million mortgage? The bank requires that you have $20 million in insurance. So now do you want to talk? You see that look? Ooh. That is the look. Now do you want to talk about it? Mm -hmm. They're always interested at that point. Yeah. And I'm okay with that being a starting point. Once you're, you know, you're interested, then we explore the other reasons why you need to have life insurance. But your bottom line is you need to have life insurance as it relates to critical illness insurance. As my, uh, my job is to think of, your, your financial portfolio and to protect it. That's my job. And I want you to think of it in, in the same manner. Imagine you spend years and years and years building your financial portfolio. God forbid you get a diagnosis tomorrow. Do you know what's gonna happen? We have to think practically here. First thing is you're gonna, you're gonna have to liquidate the emergency fund. Then that's not gonna be enough. You're gonna have to then liquidate the stocks. That's not gonna be enough. 
then you're going to sell the house. And it just keeps going, keeps going. But what if you had critical illness insurance? Mm -hmm. All that would happen is, let's say you get a diagnosis, you, it's confirmed, you take evidence in to Scotia, they um, look at the policy that you have, and you get a check. You go deal with business, you go, you go do, all, do all the things that you need to do. Yeah. And then when you come back, your portfolio is still there waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So because you cannot plan for, for what you cannot plan for, right? You don't, you don't get up tomorrow and decide that, oh, I want to be diagnosed with, <laughs> with some sort of cancer or mm. some sort of surgery needs to be done to save my life. And um, the reason I said, oh, um, just now is because I didn't know that number was that, that 20 million that you, that you hit just now. Because, um, you know, somebody like Dervin would have advised about the link between buying the house and the insurance and, you know, I'm, I'm well beefed up, you know, so the critical <laughs> insurance, the life insurance, the investing, uh, I'm well beefed up because I, I always am thinking that if anything happens, mm -hmm. I need to be, prepar be prepared for it. So, um, Dervin, from inside Scotia, what are some of the, the insurance tools that you, that you guys have that millennials can tap into? All right. So, of course, you'd have mentioned <clears throat> Criticare. Uh, we would have launched recently Scotia Elevate. That's another insurance product. We have the Affirm policies. Now, these are all policies that you need to speak with a Scotia insurance advisor about. But suffice to say, we have the solution within the Scotia group to fit your need. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, Dervin is just a walking billboard, you know. Ah. <laughs> I love it. No, he's very passionate about his job. Um, I heard that some of you guys have been sending questions, so let me take some real quick. Uh, so Denzel Blake on Zoom, he said, investing versus trading. What are the advantages and disadvantages of both? Anna, you want to take this one? Yes, absolutely. Let me tell you. The first thing is this. Well, let me just say. The typical person, the average person, thinks of trading as either Forex or day trading. The thing about it is usually the mindset. People tend to think that with trading, get rich by morning, right? Yes. And investing is, oh, I, I've got to invest 60 million, 40 million thousand years, right? That's not the thing. That's not it. The thing about it is that when you think of trading, um, as I said, just know that both of them are really investing. You're investing at, at, at the core. It's just what you're investing mm -hmm. in. Um, as I said, for one, I would not uh, have such clear boundaries between the two because, as I said, one encapsulates the other. That's really it. Um, so that would really take care of your advantages and disadvantage disadvantages question. It's trading falls on the investments, mm -hmm. right? Can fall on the investments. It's just that the lay person tends to think that tra um, trading is forex or day trading. That's, that's really it. Which is why Anna stresses that you get, get the knowledge up. You're like That's very important. You want to touch on this, Dervin? Yeah, the first thing that comes to mind is your risk tolerance here. Trading versus investing, you know, yes, they are very similar. In investing, you sometimes do some trading. If you have equities in your portfolio, you're buying and selling, what are you doing? You're trading. Trading, trading. exactly. So it's, it's going to be based on your risk tolerance, um, the potential exists in trading for you to get quite a bit of return if the market goes your way. But as an overall portfolio, you may want to have some invest, have some trading, yes, but maybe have something that is a little bit lower risk, maybe something medium risk. We'll talk about it. Okay, no, thank you. I hope that answers your question. We have another question. Uh, Mami underscore 202 on Instagram, she said, what is the smallest amount that you can start investing with. Dervin, I'm throwing this one to you. Of course. Now, smallest amount with <laughs> Scotia Investments is where I'd have to start here, is currently $250,000. And actually, we reduced that figure from 500000 earlier this year. So we split it into 50% discount right now. Come in, start your investing. But we spoke earlier about... A retirement fund, mm -hmm. which is considered a part of, can be considered a part of your investment portfolio. And for your retirement fund, 
You could even say something as low as $5,000 a month mm -hmm. in order to achieve your goal in, by the time you're ready to retire. So it's going to be dependent on what you're looking for. Investing, retirement, come to us to have the solutions. The solution is there, even if they have a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't quote me on that, please. We have another question from Yan B on Instagram. For Dervin, what equity options would you recommend for an emer emergency fund from Scotiabank? An emergency fund and equity options. Now, <laughs> the advisor in me is saying <laughs> there is a disconnect here. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, I believe you said it earlier, Anna, that you need to increase the knowledge. Uh, for equity, you really want to be more like a long-term outlook. A long-term outlook and an emergency fund doesn't go together. The emergency fund is for something that is an emergency, as it says. Something you need easy access to, liquid. If you do equities and an emergency comes along, you'll have to sell those equities, and who knows at what position you'll be in the market at that time. What if you sell at a discount based on what the market is saying? Your emergency fund won't be of much use to you in that instance. So for an emergency fund, try and get something that is liquid, try and get something that is secure. Yeah. Thank you. We have one more question. I love these questions. Keep them coming. Uh, Nisa MJ on Instagram, she says, can you expound on what a money market is? Anna, so money market Nisa, fund. you, <laughs> money market fund, because you're excited about this one. <laughs> so essentially, when it comes, as related to the money market fund, you're looking more to uh, fixed income, uh, to to fixed income assets, really, you're looking more to, to bonds, you're looking more to things that are less uh, aggressive, very conservative, that's what you're looking, looking for. Um, how it works, it's usually in a unit trust product. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you come and you, you put some money in your product mm -hmm. and your Scotia investment advisor or Scotia overall will take care of the, um, what they're gonna buy, what they're gonna put the money in, really. But it's more on a cons on the conservative side is what you're looking at. Okay. All right, thank if, you. if I may expound a little bit there. I, I want you to expound, um, um, Dervin, but I want you to hold it because I have about six or seven more questions. And I feel like they're going to stone me if I don't <laughs> let you answer their questions. Uh, so Damien, three aims on Instagram. How can the cash from a Scotia Mint policy be used to invest? Dervin. All right, we never touched on it earlier, but some insurance policies have an investment option. So what you're talking about is the cash balance on your Scotia Mint policy. If you, are, if you want to redeem that from the policy, you can use it to invest um, in stocks, in bonds, in Scotia investments. That, of course, though, goes back to what your goals are, that personal financial need that you have, um, that would allow me to make some suggestions to you for the amount of money that you're seeking to invest. Okay. Yannick is back. And Yannick said, do you advise using an insurance policy for investment? All right. So <laughs> sticking with you, Dervin. Sure. For me, there are four columns of a proper financial plan. Four, you can call them foundations. They, they build you up, they prop you up. One, we've spoken about them all, just not formally, your emergency fund. Mm -hmm. You need to have it in place. Another is your guaranteed savings. This is your pension for the time that you are ready to retire. Investments is next. And finally, insurance. I would not recommend that you simply use your insurance as an investment. Mm -hmm. You need to have I would suggest having all four in your portfolio for your financial plan. It's just that with certain insurance plans, there is a section for investing mm -hmm. and an, an investment part of it that should you need funds, maybe in an emergency, you can access. But if you had the emergency fund, you may not need to touch the insurance. If you had the investment, something low risk, you may not need to touch the insurance. So you need to have all four in your portfolio. That is it. My next question. I, I love these questions, guys. 
Um, Alexis Pommel on Zoom, she says, is giving back to charity considered a part of your needs or wants? I know. That's a very interesting question. Very interesting. And I think it comes down to your personal beliefs, honestly. When I have a client sitting in front of me telling me that I want to put some money in this particular charity or I want to do this for this person, uh, I ask them, how important is it to you? Mm -hmm. If it's very, for example, tight, yeah. very important to you, need. If, oh, okay, I, I guess I, I can do it next month. That tells me off the bat that it's not very important to you. Yeah. So it, it would be a want in that respect. And my final question, because we have to go, I wish we oh, could no. stay all night. Uh, my final question is from Winsome. Uh, she wants to know, <laughs> she, she's asking, I think of investing as gambling with my money, and I'm afraid to take the risk. Why should I? Can I take that question? Go ahead, please? Anna. Winsome, let me tell Wimsome, <laughs> that's what I saw. Wins let me tell you, you cannot afford to not take the risk in today's economy. If you have inflation at almost 10%, what ha what's happening is that the money that you think is safe in your savings account or your whatever, under your mattress, wherever it is, the value of that is going down by 10% or whatever inflation is. You can't afford to not invest because investment gives you uh, an opportunity to, to fight for your money and to fight for the value of your money. That's the opportunity that you're being provided with. So, Wimsom, I know you're scared. I know you're probably hesitant. That's why you need to talk. One, you need to get um, work on getting a, uh, working on your, your the financial the financial education aspect. Two, you need to talk to an investment advisor, but you need to understand that you. You don't have an option. You don't have a choice at this point. That's really the bottom line here. You don't have a choice, Wimsom. And that is where we close the show. I think we had a very vibrant discussion. I feel like I've learned so much in this one hour that I, I've learned in maybe the last three or four years. <laughs> and I really hope that you guys at home feel the same way. Ladies and gentlemen, we had Anna Palomino uh, she's a finance pers personal finance coach mm -hmm. and she, you can find her on Instagram and you can find her on all social media platforms pretty much. Not right? really. Instagram. Instagram only? Oh, oh YouTube. That's where she does. I have a YouTube channel too, yes. <laughs> Anna Novia, that's my YouTube channel, but that's Which it really. She doesn't upload often, so find her on Instagram. No, I do. I upload every week. Okay, every good, week. good, good, because you <laughs> forgot for a second. And we have Dervin, um, who is a uh, Scotiabank investment advisor. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to Scotia Live webinar series. This was episode two in season four. It means that we have, a, we have a ways to go. We have done a lot in educating you on how you can level up your money. And we have so much more to share with you. Tune in next time. For now, we are going to go. I'm Kingsley Morgan. I was your host and it was a pleasure. Good evening. <laughs>